and we are back with another week. We are one week closer to uh, e e ECW's Lights Out. Uh, with me is Monday's uh, Jamsaw. How are you tonight, sir? I'm doing great tonight, Brock. I'm very excited to be here. Looking forward to seeing what kind of challenges uh, face Mr. Kennedy after our stinging defeat uh, last night. Uh, very excited to see what kind of uh, challenges uh, you will be facing Mr. Kennedy. Yes, uh, uh, we know that he, he did something drastic, which will be addressed tonight. Uh, but um, we are in the land of the... of. Of the Canadians tonight, Montreal. Uh, how how do you feel about that? I love it. It's my stomping grounds. It's where where I grew up most of my life. Uh, and if, uh, it's nice to see that uh, Trish Stratus, a fellow Canadian, will be performing here tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is the first. This is uh, to see who goes on with Bailey and Lacey in the Fatal Four Way Tag Team Match for the Women's uh, Championship. Very nice. I look forward to seeing uh, what these two teams can bring to the table. And uh, I, I don't know. I th I'm thinking that the the Iconics probably have the better chance of uh, of winning just because of their experience as a team. Oh, I'm very excited. Uh, but you know, uh, it's a team that is well well put together ver versus a, a, a team of legends. Um, what do uh, what do the Iconics? Uh, need to watch out, out for when it comes to Trish and Lita? Well, I mean, from Lita, for sure, it's uh, going high. If Lita gets up top of the rope and does a moonsault or, or uh, uh, any kind of high-flying maneuver, that's going to damage uh, either one of the Iconics. Uh, Trish, they need to watch out for some Stratus faction. Mm -hmm. uh, that can come out of nowhere, almost like uh, uh, almost like Randy Orton's uh, RKO. Yeah, sir, it just comes out of nowhere. Ooh. But I mean, the interesting dynamic here, too, is that instead of just a regular tag team match where the Iconics would have more of an advantage switching in and out, this is a tornado tag where everybody's battling at the same time. So it's almost like two singles matches happening at the same time. Yeah. So does that play more f play play more for the Iconics or more for Trish and Lita? That's a, it's a tough call. I think uh, this makes it a little bit more even. I might have been a little hasty picking the Iconics. Maybe Trish and Lita would work out better. However, Trish's uh, performance in, in WCW was not as stellar as I would have liked it to be. So uh, I, as much as it pains me to say it, I see her as a bit of a weak link right now. Oh, yep, true. But we see she's very, very strong right now, uh, take, t taking out Peyton, and Lita's focusing on Billy right now. Exactly. Uh, I mean, like, it, I did even uh, have Lita and Trish uh, go against uh, Mickey James and Sasha, and yep. they lost on WCW. So it'd be interesting to see if this time away from WCW has given them a chance to gel more cohesively as a team. We can all, we, we can only tell as this match goes on, and... Uh, we see Lita. Oh, there you go. Wow, so far they're, they're dominating pretty well. I mean, and, and Trish is not shying away from grabbing some weapons. And that's just what she needs. I think that is that that is what she needed uh, throughout her whole career. Uh, <sighs> she was a good girl and, and all that, the satisfaction. And this is like a uh, new taste of uh, Trish. And she loves the sight of blood, and we're loving it. Well, so far she's been doing pretty good, hitting, uh, uh, hitting the Iconics with a, with a bat several times to the face and even stealing it back away from Peyton. Yep. Uh, it's, it's definitely looking the bat, like she, she's she's uh, got a little bit of the stinger in her. Yes. Woo. Oh, could this be it? Oh, nice DDT. And Lita's just going back into her her extreme mode. Um, but we know later on Trish and Lita will also be in a triple threat match to see uh, if they can uh, beat uh, the current women's mid card champion um, Al Al Alicia Fox. Um, but that's for later tonight. Uh, how do you think that the Iconics are doing as of right now against Trish and Lita? 
Well, they're not doing as well as I had hoped they would be. I mean, it's nice to see Billy Kay's uh, finally woken up and decided to, to put the hurt on uh, the veterans, but it's it's still anyone's game. I think it's too soon for a pin, Billy, but, yep. uh, you know, Peyton being there ready to jump. <laughs> oh, man, taking out her partner at the same time, but still kind of worth it, man. Sometimes those high-risk, high-reward maneuvers are the best. Yes. We see she's going for a table. Ooh, a table. Interesting choice. Now what? Now what would your first choice be for 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 a weapon? Baseball bat or a chair. Those Baseball. are the my two go tos. Sledgehammer's too slow. Table takes time to set up. You're leaving yourself open for stuff. Same thing with a ladder. Very slow to swing. Uh, but a good chair or bat shot are okay. Kendo sticks are good if you just want to hurt your opponent. Yep. Not not like knock them out, but just like make it sting and piss them off. Mm -hmm. uh, kendo sticks the way to go. But I mean, if I was going to in like a street fight, I'd want a bat or a steel chair. And that crack too, that that crack from the kendo stick is 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 oh so sa satisfying as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It looks like See, and here we go. Now they're 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 zeroing in together on Trish. Yep. That's the smart way to play it. You get one of the players out of the way, and then you both focus on the. The one in the ring. Ooh, speaking of kendo stick, let's see what she can do with it. Oh, Trish is not paying attention. Ooh, she missed Ooh, it. But she dodges out of the way. There you go. Billy K. says, fuck that stick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just knee you instead. Oh, took her eye off the ball for one second, and this is where Trish comes back. Boom. You mean Lita? Lita came back. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, <laughs> Just tossing them around like ragdolls. Trish, yeah, I'm, st I'm starting to think that I made the wrong call here. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's been proven. It's nice to see Trish actually get the win as well after so many weeks of disappointment and not being able to get the W. Finally, being able to get one over on them is fantastic. Yes. It looks like uh, Peyton's not too happy with her partner losing the match for them either. Oh no! Oh no! No, oh, she's walking away. Well, very unfortunate because, like, for sure, like, I thought for sure that they would be the ones moving forward. They are a team. They have held uh, women tag championships in the past. Uh, it was it was a real uh, surprise, but good to see, too, that, uh, that uh, Team Trish Extreme uh, is, uh, is moving forward. Yep. And next we have... Uh the week three of Cena's uh, farewell tour, and he's facing Sheamus in a no-holds-barred. Um, now, what do you think about this whole fair farewell tour thing? Well, I like it. I like the fact that John's going out on his terms and uh, calling the shots and picking the matches. And so far, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he's been on a roll. I, I think he's been winning his past few matches. Yes, sir, he has, yes. He beat, uh, he knocked out, uh, Bobby Lashley. And CM Punk last week. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, so far he's two, he's two for, he's two and oh right now in a series of, well, tech, technically five, because on week five is the, the pay-per-view yeah. where he faces J JBL for, uh, title versus retirement. So if John wins, then he won't retire until he loses the belt. Correct, correct. And here we go. And I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure John Cena and Sheamus had some rivalries in the past, and Cena always came out on top. Yes, actually, um, it was for a world title, I think, where it was a TLC, where it was a tape tables match. Where Cena slipped off of the turnbuckle and slammed through a table, so Sheamus took home the WWE World Title. Uh, Without really doing not uh, doing the work to win, it was just a technicality. Yes, yes, yes. But you know, we know she Sheamus is one tough, 
son son of a bitch. Uh, he 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 is a Celtic war warrior, and Cena is now cracked. Uh, does this change change uh, things in in your opinion? Well, not really. I think that Cena has the more to lose, so he's going to give it 150%. You know, he's going to do everything he can to not be embarrassed on his way out. And given the way he's been performing the past couple of weeks, I, I'm relatively confident he has it in the bag. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I think Sheamus is decent competition for him, but I do think that John Cena is on a roll and has so much momentum, it's going to take a lot for Sheamus to be able to interrupt it. Yes. I see, you know? Yeah, there you go. Huge punches to the face of uh, Sheamus. I mean, Sheamus has uh, been taking a lot of damage so far. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice close. There you go. Now, what do you think makes that move hurt hurt more? Uh, the, the fact that you bounce off the ropes right into his running clothes? clothesline or or is it the fact that he's running at you for that clothesline well it's definitely the, the, like the clothesline itself is devastating but the momentum of bouncing off of those ropes it's like a slingshot so you're adding speed to that momentum when you get that clubbing blow to your chest i mean that could almost totally rotate you around his arm like a propeller yep true true Ooh. oh showing this there you go cena Huge back body slam. Going for the pin. Nope. Not yet. Not quite yet. Sheamus not quite ready to give it. Ugh. Hui. There you go. Like he's caught a second win, but John Cena also has caught a second win. Yes, sir. He's going to go up with a huge tornado DDT. Nice. Whoop! Could this be a pin? Very acrobatic. Don't normally see that kind of move from Cena. No. Whoop. Game is looking really hurt now. Oh yeah. Whoop. Oh wow. Oh wow. Nice. Nice. Huge, huge move by Cena and going for the pin. Could this be it? Don't think it's quite enough. Oh, I was mistaken again. So and it John is. Cena taking the uh, taking the W. He is three of five as of right now in week three. A big win. Um. Ooh. So what would a loss uh cause for uh Cena's uh mo? Momentum going into the pay per view. Oh, wait. Who's there? You go. Oh, snap. Cena's he's getting so close to the to that big match that he he, he he's just snapping even worse. So next we have, oh, finally, we're, okay, so we're getting some answers from Mr. Kennedy. Uh, you know, uh, we know that he won the 24-7 title, so he is the current 24-7 champion. But what's the biggest problem is that he not only took home the green 24-7 title, but he also took the title we were giving to Daniel Bryan if he won last night on Monday night, so Daniel's a little peeved, if I do say so myself. So what do you think of uh, what he did on M M Monday night stealing uh, Daniel Bryan's trophy title? Cause well, I, th I think it was kind of despicable. I mean, he'd already won the actual title. To steal the, the trophy title that was going to be bestowed uh, upon Daniel Bryan was a, a, a bit of a uh, uh, 
a cheap maneuver, in my personal opinion. And that's it right there. Uh, the eco-friendly 24-7 ti t trophy title, he's wearing it right to the ring. Uh, I feel like this is a statement to Daniel Bryan being the longest reigning champion. Well, I mean, it's more than just a statement. It's a, it's like a slap in the face. It's like he's trying to rub his victory into to Daniel Bryan's face. I mean, considering all the, the achievements and records Daniel was able to, to set, it's very uh, upsetting to see uh, the villain holding this belt. I mean, if it hadn't been for that stupid, la uh, that stupid steel cage, yep. uh, this would have been an entirely different story, I'm sure. Yes, so he's making a, a announcement right now while showing off the title. So hopefully we get some answers. Okay, so he's... Well, definitely no lack of ego for Mr. Kennedy. Oh, no. I mean, is this a shot at both or just this brand? I'm guessing it could be it could be either. Well, I mean, he, I don't know. That match didn't show off his uh, his abilities, so I really don't think he should be bragging. Right, he he took the coward's way out. Yeah, but I mean, like for some champions, a win is a win, no matter how you get it. And I'm pretty sure Mr. Kennedy is one of those types of champs that. To, that's all that really matters to him down the at the bottom line is that he has the belt. Oh, and we see his 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 bodyguards, Akam and Rezar, waiting in the back if anything happens. Um Come on, we're getting word that they're that something just pulled ju just pulled into the parking lot very fast. So hopefully hopefully nothing comes from that. I wonder what that could be. I mean, they usually have a pretty tight security yes. in the back. Uh, so surprising to see uh, that somebody would be coming to, to interrupt the show. Hopefully it's not. <laughs> oh, no, we are getting our answers. Hold on. It's Daniel Bryan. Daniel Dan Bryan? What Dan is he doing here? He isn't scheduled to be here tonight. He is not scheduled to be here. Mr. Kennedy, leave. Get out of there. Go. Go. Go, Kennedy. Kennedy, go. He has no idea. There's oh. no uh, earpiece letting him know. He ri Oh, Daniel. Looks like Daniel Bryan slipped past the guard. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, we're getting word. Okay, okay. Eric Eric made it a triple, uh, a handicap match. So we're getting, ev we're getting them all there. We're getting everybody here. Okay, so to catch us all up, Daniel Bryan invaded tonight's show, so he has accepted the consequences. So Eric has made this a handicap match against Mr. Kennedy and the AOP. Wow, I don't think Daniel Bryan thought things through before rushing out. I guess he didn't realize the AOP would be a factor. Oh, no, no, I don't. But, I mean, he is. A man that just goes in with, with with his heart. So I mean, he saw that there was a trophy that was his was stolen. So he so I think he has to get it back. But, well, I mean, definitely he is a man of principle, and uh, the principle of the matter is that uh, something that was intended for him was stolen, and it wasn't a belt that he lost. It was a belt that was going to be gifted to him. Yes. And the fact that it, like, like, like you said, it was a belt that, that was going to be a gift. Like, it's not a belt to flaunt and all that. It's a gift to take home. And, you know, the fact that Mr. Kennedy chose to steal it and then flaunt it in front of us all here tonight, um, was despicable, was, bleh, was despicable. But what do you think the odds are for him, for him tonight against three people? Well, considering two of the people are behemoth-sized uh, uh, Middle Eastern gentlemen in the Akam and Razor, uh, I, I think they're very lo low. I mean, don't get me wrong, Daniel Bryan's a 
fighter, and I think he'll put up a great fight, but I think he'll be overwhelmed by the odds. Yeah. Ooh, Mr. Kennedy. See, what Brian really needs is some people that have his back. Right now, he doesn't have anybody. He has no allies or friends uh, in either ECW or uh, WCW. He's been a lone wolf so far. Yes. I, I mean, you, you have been saying since day one that the AOP need 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 a lead leader. Um, I mean, they are the current world cha world tag champions. Uh, what can a man like Mr. K do for a team of the AOP? Well, it really depends. I mean, how he wants to play it. Uh, I have a feeling he's going to just t use up the AOP. That's really his idea is to make sure that his ass is protected. He doesn't really have the AOP's best interest. Uh, I hope at one point that uh, AOP realized that and moved past him, but you know, as long as he's got them as backup, there's very few uh, superstars that I think that they could actually stand up to Mr. Kennedy. I mean, it was a very smart move on his part. Ooh, only a one count. Now, we know that the AOP is known to have a leader. They had... Uh... Drake Mav Maverick uh, and Seth before they um but before they left the WWE to come to this brand, so they aren't new to being told by a leader. But then again, Mr. Ken Ken Kennedy d doesn't seem like the leader type. Well, he's definitely not the lead by example type, but he is the uh, lead from behind two powerful beasts. Yep. Type. You know, uh, I, I look at. Mr. Kennedy like a Donald Trump, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he doesn't have to be the smartest. He doesn't have to be the fastest. He just has to have uh, uh, the right type of people backing him. Correct. Ooh, Daniel running into a wall ran into him. Definitely. I mean, that's not the, the kind of accent you want to have, having walls smashing you down. Oh, no. Ooh, but he's fighting, though. He's doing very well. Ooh. Well, he is spry and quick, and he's going up against uh, someone that's faster and slow, so it, it does give him a little bit of an edge. But, I mean, also, he's taking the most damage out of everybody. The the AOP and, and Kennedy have been smartly tagging in and out, keeping the fresh players in the game. That is true, and not many can uh, be can come out with uh, the uh, win when they're going against two or more in... In a handicap match, so I—I I mean, he's doing well now. But if you look back to when Brock Lesnar was the 24/7 uh, champion, he went up against Goldberg, Randy Orton, and who else came came over from Monday? Um, Goldberg, Randy Orton, AJ Styles. AJ, yes. I think it might have been. But but still, a man the size. Ooh, look at you, sir. Your suits. Your suits, they 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 always look crisp. Well, like I got ten suits that are all the same, man. It's just <laughs> really easy. You change the suit. <laughs> but like I was saying, so so the man the size of Brock and the experience of Brock lost in in that kind of match. So, I mean, I'm not trying to knock to 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 knock Daniel Bryan down, but he he doesn't have the strength that Brock has. He doesn't have the well, he does have the experience. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna take, take, take that away from him. But he's, he's not as big. He's not as strong as Brock. And Brock dropped, dropped it after one title defense. But yeah, but I mean, sometimes it's, it's not always the size that counts. I mean, look at this. That's how he got Kurt Angle to tap. If he could get one of those and not have Mr. Kennedy come in and break it up, if he could have brought uh, Income uh, or Razar into the other side mm -hmm. of the, of the ring and put his finisher on from there Ooh, for the pen. could have had a better opportunity of uh, actually scoring that victory i mean dan daniel bryan does do, does hold the fastest sub in 24 7 championship uh 2020 matches uh with 45 seconds against the wrestling machine that is kurt angle exactly uh but i mean look at the psychology behind daniel bryan right now i mean he he's just hanging out in the enemy's corner he's not He's not giving any room. He's not backing away. He's like in everybody's face. Like a he's like a a pit bull terrier. Yes. Whoop! Nice. There you go, Daniel Bryan. There you go. A little bit of space. Now, if he could do a, 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 a submission from over there, he might have enough time to get him to tap out before uh, Mr. Kennedy or, or Rizar can get in. 
Now, what would this do? Uh, now, what would this win do for, for, for him and plus Monday night? Well, I mean, it would show beyond a shadow of a doubt that uh, Steel Cage matches are garbage and that Daniel Bryan really is the absolute best wrestler of our time. Yes. I, I do agree 100%. Oh, there you go. Nice reversal. Ankle now uh, putting a hurt on Daniel, severely injuring that back. If he can get a finisher off, this might be it for Daniel. One, two, whoa! Kicks out at two and a half. Oh, he's almost done. Ever the fighter, ever the fighter, not willing to give up until uh, until uh, the fat lady sings, or in this case, uh, the fat Acom drops him <laughs> with a finisher. Acom, he's almost done. Come on. He gets up like it's like nothing. Oh, it looks Ooh. like he's gonna reverse out of that maneuver too. Ooh. A quick elbow to the face of Akam. Akam looking for a hot tag, gonna bring in Razar. Daniel Bryan again, unfortunately, oh. uh, damaged as all hell. Yep. Uh, facing a fresh opponent with little to no damage on him, but. Going for that, uh, come on, going for that come on, come on, come on, get there, what? I can't believe it. What is Bryan that? Pulls out the w. What the hell? What are you fe feeding your superstars? Hey man, he's vegan, so it's... Oh, that is <laughs> true. vegetables from his fucking garden and nuts. Oh <laughs> my god. Damn, so what does this do for the 24-7 title? Well, I mean, like, he didn't really beat Mr. Kennedy. He didn't. Uh, and I don't think we had the title on the line. But, we... I mean, maybe, maybe Daniel Bryan should qualify for a rematch against Mr. Kennedy. Uh, uh, I'm thinking maybe at the pay-per-view. Oh, that would be great. Oh, my God. What the hell was that? He came in with a steel, with a steel chair and left in a submission. Oh. Gotta give it to Daniel Bryan, man. He is the submission master. I mean, he proved it to Kurt Angle. And he proved it again here tonight. I mean, Razar was barely damaged, and he was able to get him to tap out. Oh, damn. All right. Uh, moving on. Um, first off, Mr. K and his bodyguards left before we all could stop them. So the 24-7 title is still in the possession of the champion. Um... But we'll we'll see what happens on Monday. Hope, ho hopefully we'll get some answers from Daniel Bryan on what he did here tonight. And uh, we just need to figure out what's going on with this title. Um, but until then, uh, next up we have a triple threat match for the Midcard Women's Championship. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen here because uh, Trish and Lita... Uh, did very well in their tag team match, and now they have to go against each other. So that kind of switches the dynamic up a little bit. Yep. And here comes your current champion, uh, Alicia Fox. Um, now, I know you weren't expecting her to win the title last week against R Ruby in that over-the-top rope battle royal. Um, but what did this t title uh, uh, sig signify for Alicia Fox, who wasn't taken very seriously in the WWE? Well, I think it's a big, big achievement for her because she hasn't been able to hold a title in uh, previous promotions, and I guess, and it also goes to show the the uh, openness and uh, willingness for us to really help the superstars achieve their dreams. I mean, I don't think she was really given the opportunity to even really get uh, the title uh, or any title in WWE, and and now here she's a. Uh, got the mid-card championship in her fourth month so within four months she's been able to to capture some some gold um yes you 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 speak 100 percent of the truth um but on to predictions who do you see pulling out uh with the title here tonight well i think the the skill set lita will probably be the one to to win it i'd love to see trish win it because she's Canadian, I'm Canadian, we're in Montreal, uh, yep. but uh, I really believe that Lita probably has the chops to win it. 
Okay, okay, so we got those predictions. Um, I will go with our champion right now. Um, I gotta be biased 1000%. Uh, and Alicia Fox, I feel like she still has a lot more to prove uh, with this title run. So, um, um, so well, definitely, I'd yeah. love to see her win because then she proved the WWE wrong. That not only that it wasn't just a fluke win either, that she's able to retain it. Yes. Uh, I just worry that that Lita's veteran skill set is going to be the, the deciding factor. True, correct. And it looks like Trish and Alicia Fox are actually work. Nope, never mind. My bad. <laughs> you pulled a me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so. All right, so again, I'm going to ask it like I have been for the past four f four months. What does Alicia Fox bring that trip? Now, this is a hard question cause they, be, because they are veterans, but what does Alicia Fox bring that Trish and Lita might not be expecting? Well, I think, first of all, uh, youth, because she's younger than the other two, and second, just the fact that she's never had this opportunity, so she has more to lose. You know, she... This is her first real title win, so going against someone who finally got a taste of a title, mm -hmm. it's going to make that uh, that opponent twice as fierce because they don't want to lose it. Right. Correct. Ooh, your girl's coming back. Um. Oh. So, what does Lita need need uh need uh, to work on uh for 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 body wise to win this match? Well, neck and core. I mean, neck if she's going to go for the twist of fate. Okay. And, uh, of course, the core for any of her high-flying moves, because uh, they're all splashes of a sort that uh, target the mid-body. Yes. Whoop. Nice reversal. Whoop. Nice drop kick, but not as Very nice as Randy by Orton. The, uh, the, by, by all three parties concerned right now. Yes. Whoop. There you go. Trish fighting back. Punch in the face. Now, but Trish, uh, uh, putting a hurt on her old, one of her oldest friends in the business. Yes. Now, um, with this match, we find out uh, between Trish and Lita, who actually goes to the World Women's Title title run. Uh, we know when they signed, they both wanted, they both had had called out Rub Ruby Riot, so they both wanted the wanted to be in the mid card title, but only one could have. So. Uh, tonight will determine who stays in the division and who goes to the world division. So how, how, how will that be determined? I mean, uh, if one of the two wins, they stay mid-card and the other one goes for, for the women's? Yes. Or is it, and what happens if they lose? Is the losing person supposed to then reface for the mid-card and the other one go on to the... No, so, uh, so with that, the winner... If Trish and Lita, if 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 one of them wins, the winner, the new champion stays in the mid card division. The other go, the loser goes to the world, and whoever gets pinned by by Alicia Fox stays in the uh, mid card championship, and the other goes to the world title. Okay, so this is almost in like Lita or Trish's best interest to uh, let Alicia Fox pin the other one. Yes, yes, yes. Um. But hey, who know? We'll find out what happens. And Lita going up. Oh, she oh, missed. Oh, and biffed it, biffed it hard. Unexpected uh, maneuver by Alicia Fox too. Uh, again, dominating, surprisingly out of nowhere. Yes. Whoop! Nice. Huge maneuver on Lita. I wouldn't have expected that kind of like tilt and whirl move from uh, from Alicia. Oh no! Oh, they run into Trish. Oh. Well, that's that's a great thing to do, man. When when you, there's no weapons in the ring, use one of the other opponents as a weapon. Correct. Oh, Lita's feeling something. Yeah, nope. That's what I thought. Dragging her down. Oh, nice maneuver. Ooh, could this be it? Lita, what are you doing? Oh. Very close. I didn't realize it was a false count anywhere either. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, they! Oh, Alicia Fox is really showing why she is the current champion. Yeah, she's definitely on fire. She's got the crowd behind her. Uh, a surprising success story of ECW. Oh yes, yes, very, very shocking. A woman that was looked, looked and laughed at in in uh, 
in the WWE is, is now a dominant mid card champion. Whoop! Oh, well, I mean, like get, getting clean when you have substance abuse problems definitely helps. And yes, I think it's helped her to to uh, see things in a better light and to stay in better shape. Mm hmm. Whoop! Suplex. <laughs> Big suplex by Lena on the outside on Trish. Oh, and Hurricane Rana. Nice drop kick. But uh, Alicia Fox saying nope. Oh, and then getting tossed by Lena. Lena again back on the dominance train. Yes, it it, it actually seems like uh, Trish is not really as active as we want her to be. It is unfortunate and and true, but uh, like I said, she's she's had a difficult time in the past, and if if it wasn't for her victory earlier, she would still be on a losing streak. Oh, there we go! Come on, Trish. All it takes there is a minute to to kind of get your comeback and and get moving. Oh, going for an avalanche! Whoa. What a risky move! Nice. Huge slam, but will she be able to capitalize, or will Alicia Fox be able to interrupt the count? Oh no, neither. Not even Lita. Well, of course, like she's so extreme, she's used to flying from the top rope. That was like nothing to her. Oh, nice chick kick. Alicia's not gonna let that happen. Not while she's still champion. Nope. And conscious. <laughs> Whoop. Throw her over. Now focus on focus on Lita. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least she's uh, gonna have Trish's uh, comeback run out. So, yeah, still that, a smart move. Yeah, that is true. Oh, uh -oh. Clue, yeah, actually a good move too, because Trish is the most damage. Oh, goodness. bringing her back into finisher, you're getting a better opportunity of potentially finishing it right here. I think it's over. I think uh, Alicia's gonna retain. Oh, Trish. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh. Nice Shining Wizard. Oh. Yeah, huge Shining Wizard to the face of Trish. Lita now doing a snap suplex on Alicia, getting her out of the way. If she was smart, oh, she's going to go for a finisher of her own. Yep, she has two in the chamber. Let's see what she does with them. Ooh, DDT. Oh, DDT. Oh, DDT. One. Alicia Fox not hurt two. enough. <gasps> Maybe she was. Maybe she was, and I called it. You did. Lita Damn. Was just too extreme. So Lita stays as new champion in the mid card division, and Trish will be going all the way up to the world division. Now, if Trish were to win that, and Trish and Lita were to win the women's tag team championships. They would be the most dominant two females on, on your whole brand. Yes. Ooh. Looks good. Looks good. And she has yet to uh, connect with uh, the Hard Hardy Boys, which I'm actually shocked with, but... Um... Early days, man. It's only been four weeks, and we've got a lot of superstars for the... The uh, TV time is uh, very precious. Yes. Well, damn. So, Lita is now your new mid-card women's championship. Um, I'm hoping that Alicia Fox gets a rematch uh, here soon, but um, only time will tell. So, next up, we have a classic, uh, Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar. This one's a tough call. Like I, I both have beaten one another, so it's a, a really difficult call choosing who might be the victor in this match. Damn. Um. Now we know there's been rumor of a return after the pay per view. We don't know who, uh, male or female, but we know uh, that there will be a return soon, and we know Brock's been acting a little weird backstage. Uh, he's been fuming, he's been short lately, so, 
Uh, hopefully Kurt can survive this because we know when Brock gets mad, bad things happen. Indeed, but I mean, if anybody can put up with the abuse of uh, Brock Lesnar, it's Kurt Angle. Um, do you do you remember in early 2002, I believe it was, 2002, when Brock did that moonsault and he actually missed? Yeah, he clipped his head on the uh, top turnbuckle. Ugh. Oh, well, that was a long time ago, and that was against Kurt Angle. And if I'm not mis- and yeah. if if I'm and not he mistaken, still went through the rest of the match. Yes, and if I'm not mistaken, they never faced off after that, or am I mistaken? I don't think so. I, I think you're right. I think that was the last time they faced one another. Oh. There you go. Whoop! Oh, Brock just so strong. If I'm not mistaken, too, at the end of the match, I think Kurt Angle actually gave Brock a big hug, you know, just uh, out of respect for almost killing himself. Yes, yes. I mean, that's, ugh. That's crazy and scary, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's one thing that we, we all have to keep in mind. This is entertainment, but they are, they are and people call it fake all the time, but you know, these people are putting their lives on the line. Uh, one false move can kill you or paralyze you. There we go. I mean, I'd like to see anybody go through a uh, go through a uh, suplex city. I mean, we know that uh uh Kurt Ang- Angle ha- ha- has his angle slam. Would that be the same as Brock's uh, Suplex City? Well, I don't think so, because angle, Angle... Well, I mean, they're very similar, but the, the Angle Slam is really just one uh, one slam. Uh, suplex City is more like uh, more more like Eddie Guerrero's uh, Three Amigos. Uh, and, I mean, these guys are trained to take those bumps. Uh, anyone coming off the street that went through this, I, I'm telling you, they wouldn't say it's fake. Oh, no, yeah, it's... um. It's more scripted than fake. I, I mean, just look at the moves they do, the heights they jump off. Like, if that's fake, then slap my ass and call me Sa- Sally. Cause... Exactly. I mean, that's one of the things that, that uh, I've always appreciated from Chris Jericho. Like, he would always get up in arms and pissed off when people would call it fake. It's not fake. What they do is real. This is not CGI. They're jumping no. off ropes. They're flying to the floor. They're hitting each other in the face with chairs. You're going to get hurt. Yes. Yes. Are the results sometimes predetermined? Yes. Yes. You know, they, they can be. Uh, sometimes, like in a scenario like this, it's just called on the fly, and you just let what happens happen, you know, yep. for the for, for the sense of the story. But uh, it's by no means fake. It, the physical toll that these people put on their bodies is amazing. And the stories that they can tell with just different holds and stuff – it's amazing. It's uh, anyway. I really appreciate it as an art form, and I think the the real fans appreciate it for the art form. Even knowing that it can be scripted, it doesn't diminish it any. I mean, Correct. I love Star Wars. Yeah, you know, people aren't going, oh yeah, but there's really no spaceships and shit. I know that, but I mean, it's entertaining. Oh yes, yes, one hundred percent. Oh, uh oh. Jeez. I mean, right there, a move like that. I mean, moves like that from a man of that size. You can't fake that. No, and it has to hurt. And I mean, that's why these guys get go under surgery all the time. They get injured. Uh, They take a year off sometimes from action in order to recover. But, uh, you know, they keep coming back for the passion of the art form. Mm -hmm. Whoop, a five. Ooh, could this be it? No, rope break, man. He's right near the ropes. Oh. Here, well, it kicks out anyway. That ref is blind, man. Get him some glasses. We need to. I mean, we don't have the most expensive vis- vis- vision, so he might have an appointment soon, but... <laughs> oh, there you go. Nice. Nice suplex from Angle himself. Angle smartly deciding to go get a weapon. The only way he can equalize. There you go. Welcome oh. to the land of extreme. Oh, and he misses. Oh, Jesus. 
loving blows on the back, but he dodges real quickly out of the way. But uh, Brock's not letting that stand. Oh, dropping him right on the bat. One, two, no, kick out still. Still not quite enough to put a good man down. I mean, uh, I have a feeling uh, Kurt is not long for this match. Oh, no, no, no. Something's got to give. I mean, how scary would, would, would it be to see a man the size of Brock Lesnar? Fucking terrifying. <laughs> like, <laughs> something like that came at you, would be like, Frankenstein! Yeah, <laughs> no! seriously. <laughs> Grab some torches and pitchforks. Like if, like, if he came up to me and said, Hey, it's time for you to... Time for you to to spread your cheeks, I would, without thought, be like, oh, okay, sir, uh, please be gentle. And, of course, he wouldn't, because he's Brock Lesnar. And that'll make him even rougher. Be like, yes! Gentle, I'll show you gentle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You're much, you're much better going, motherfucker, and punching him in the face, because then he'll end you quickly. Yes, yes. If you ask him to be gentle, he'll take his time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice, there you go. Uppercuts from Kurt Angle. Nice move there. Getting him on the outside where he can try to take advantage of the environment a little bit. Yes. Pick him up. Throw him back in. All right, Kurt. Kurt, you got one in the chamber and one signature. You got to do something. I mean, oh, no. Right to the top. Right. I didn't mean go from I did beat this, Kurt. <laughs> Oh, he lands and it. And it succeeds. And Unlike Brock, he does not clip his head on the turnbuckle. <laughs> oh. Wow, that was a lot closer than I thought it would be. Got to do an angle slam. Put the beast down, but Brock is close to a finisher with 96%. Ah! Oh, an angle slam. This could be it. That is it. And it is. Kurt Angle putting one over Brock. Ooh. I'm sure that's not helping his already pissy mood. Oh, no. Oh, no. I mean, would you consider, consider that an upset? Oh, no! Oh, it looks like Kurt ain't feeling any of that. No, he's, he's not putting up with any garbage today. Oh, that performance was crazy. And it just goes to show you that uh, Kurt Angle is not done with wrestling yet. I mean, he may have retired from WWE, but he's still a part of wrestling. Yes. And with our main event, we have JBL versus Baron Corbin versus M M MVP in 2020's final steel cage match. Um, it has not been good for the both of us. They've always been trashy been <laughs> yes um so are you excited to uh see these ma matches end yes very much so i'm very excited that this is the last one ever <laughs> at least in 20 uh, for in 2020 we'll see what happens in 2021 oh lord um so what do you see the match result being in this kind of match between these guys well, it's a really tough call because they're all real rough performers in, in a steel cage. Uh, but I, I think, like, I would like to see MVP win it. I think he, he deserves the W. Uh, I think he's probably got the most speed out of all three, so he might have the slight edge there. But it really depends because if, uh, if uh, JBL and Corbin turn on him and, and work together to... to, 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 to damage him it'll slow him down yes plus i mean given the whole black lives matter stuff that's going on right now it'd be yep. awesome to see uh mvp come out on top oh yes 100 percent um but like we've st stated uh if if you are champ champ champion you get your en entrance so we can show you off and talk about you um what do you think about his his comeback and his title run so far. It's been really great, actually. I was never really a big JBL fan, but his run has been so dominant, and he hasn't uh, grabbed the mic and talked too much. <laughs> I never really liked listening to JBL, but he did perform very well. He was always a, a top-notch performer. So seeing him do what he does best, kicking ass in a ring, 
Yep. Fantastic. And the money. Sir, you better catch oh, yeah. catch some. You better catch some because we all got a more mortgage to pay. Oh, it's okay. Don't, for, don't, don't forget, I get paid $2 more an hour than you. Oh, that's right. Damn, that's right. <laughs> Sir, you have the best of oh, you have the best of of the better brands. You have the longest reigning champion in 24/7 2020. Uh, you know what? But but we're done with that. We're done with these talks. JBL um he was but before he retired, he was known as the wrestling god. Did did you believe in that persona? I, I did uh, uh, for, for quite some time. I felt like he was really backing up what he was uh, what he was saying. Uh, he was a very dominant champion, but I mean, I loved seeing John Cena come and kick his ass. Yeah, you know it was. But I mean, that that's what is great about a, a superstar like JBL. I mean, he is a heel through and through. He can never be anything other than a heel. So you want to hate him, uh, but I mean. I can hate him and respect him at the same time. Right. He is a dominant force, and he deserved his title wins. It was just fun to see someone like Cena come and, and take him out. Correct. JBL, this isn't a pin match. Well, you can pin in a, in a cage match. That's one thing that people have to think about. One of the reasons I was mostly pissed off with Daniel Bryan's performance. With how quickly he's able to make people tap out, yeah. In a steel cage match, you can make, you can pin someone, you can make them tap out, or you can escape. And for some reason, they just kept going for the escape. Huh. I did not know that. Whoop. Ooh, nice big boot. I mean, it's it, it's more dramatic of a win if you do the escape, but uh, it is true. It is just like any other match. You can keep them in the cage and damage them as much as you want and then pin them, but... Uh, people like to escape the cage because of the drama that it brings. Oh, JBL climbing. Baron Corbin not letting it stand. Nope. Knocking him to the floor. Whoa. Nice. Nice. Ah, uh, oh, MVP. Big knee to JBL. Oh. Picking him up. MVP taking it to Corbin. Very good job there. Going for the pin. Oh, no. Broken up by JBL. JBL, you can't climb just I yet. Let, JB, let JBL climb. You can get the pin in while he's climbing. Oh. Sir. Sir, this. You're so great with that. It's strategy, man. You got to think. The best superstars are very cerebral. Whoa! MVP is climb. Oh, could this be it? It could be, but I mean, Corbin could quickly get up there. Oh, he's almost there. Oh. oh. So close. Yeah. Now between the two of them, poor MVP screwed. <laughs> yep. All right, pull him down. I swear to God, if they just hang there and all three of them fucking climb. <laughs> Whoa, what the hell? He's like all twisted and bent. Oh, no. Knock him off, Baron. Jesus. Oh, nope. They're both climbing. And MVP is going to climb up there and then work on JBL and Baron Corbin's going to friggin'. Think so? Anyway. Eh, I think it's possible, given the way things have been going. Oh, see, this is why we're ending steel cage matches. <laughs> so make this a good one, guys. Ooh, MVP. <laughs> oh, get it, MVP. It doesn't matter because if he gets up to the top, then JBL can just start climbing and pull him down. Yep. Oh. Oh. Busted open, but oh. still doesn't bother to toss him to the floor. He'll let him just stand there and bleed and then climb. <laughs> Cause why not? <laughs> Baron needs to do something. Oh, nice reversal. 
Ooh. Corbin working on JBL. Ay. MVP assisting. Corbin moving off to the side. He's like, I'm going to climb while you guys fight. Yeah, seriously. What are you doing, Corbin? What are you doing? Corbin's doing nothing. Jesus Christ. Wait, what does this mean? Corbin was, I think Corbin was paid off by JBL to help oh, him win. Oh, that's a good possibility. In the words of Ted, ev everybody's got a price. That's true, man. That's true. Oh, well, with that being said, that is your match. Um, you know, uh, with the rumor of, 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 of a return, um, what is your thoughts going into, uh, Lights Out? I'm very much looking forward to it. My, uh, right now, the two biggest matches that I'm looking the most forward to is Daniel Bryan facing Mr. Kennedy to get his 24-7 championship back. And uh, the women's uh, the women's tag team match uh, that there are tourn respective tournaments have been building towards. So those are the ones that I'm very much looking forward to. We're going to see the women's tag finals next Monday on Nitro. So 